If you haven't seen the last video in the series, click the card on the top right to watch it. Other than that, enjoy the video. Okay, so here I have a little tower defense example. You know, I have a nice long path here. And my problem here is I want to move these cubes across this entire path. And I want to make it as optimal as possible so I can run more calculations on the main thread. You know, free up some room. You know, save some frames. So to do that, we're going to be using iJob Parallel for Transform. And it is a job system that is meant to move transform objects like with um, given values and calculations. So I already have the logic here since I this, since the main premise of this video is to uh, show you how to create an iJob Parallel for Transform job system, how to run it and execute it. So, so let's make this little move cube job. So public struct as usual move cubes job and it's going to inherit from i job parallel for parallel for transform and this time uh, our execute method for the job is going to take in an index and it's also going to take in a transform access transform so the transform access is just the job systems version of the transform component. The transform access object or struct has, you know, the generally the same parameters: position, rotation, local scale, local position, local rotation, all that stuff. So now I'm going to move my logic, my code logic here. Yeah. Move, move this. Let me just quickly select it. There you go. Take all of that. Wait, no, no. I'm gonna take my all of my code here, take this, and we're gonna put it in here, go to the comment. You know, I don't really wanna have to do this logic yet. As that is as this is all for another series, and it's gonna be much more refined. Okay, so basically what I have here, I have delta time, you know, the nodes and all of this for any necessity for the enemy to move. Now what we're going to do is create a new instance of our move move cubes job. So we're going to do move cubes job move cubes equals a new move cubes job. Now we need to populate the parameters. So of course delta time is going to be time dot delta time, but we're also going to need our or two arrays and a list. So up top here we're going to create a native array of an integer and we're going to call this whatever this is. So it's going to be enemy node indexes, enemy node in index indexes. I just put an underscore here to distinguish it. It's going to be a new native array of integer, and we're going to have to manually populate this array. So do cubes dot length cubes dot count, and of course allocator dot temp job since I'm only going to be using this native container for a single job. Now we're going to create another native container, integer, and it's going to be of enemies, enemies to remove here. It's going to be a native list. Native list. Put an underscore to distinguish it. Equals a new native list and allocator dot temp job. And below that, we're going to create our last little native array which is our nodes so we can move our enemies a new native array vector 3 of our node positions and of course allocator.temp job now I'm gonna to have to populate our enemy node or enemies um, node indexes so I'm gonna do this real quick Okay, so now I have it populated. Now we can assign all these variables into our job system. So enemy node indexes equals enemy node indexes, the nodes equals underscore nodes, and enemies to remove equals underscore enemies to remove. All right, so now we have our variables assigned in our moves cubes job. Now below this, we're going to create something special for our iJob Parallel 4 Transform interface. So since this takes in a transform access and it iterates over multiple transforms, we're gonna do what we're gonna do is create a new transform access array. 
and to do this it's pretty simple so it's just gonna be just an, just a whole array of all the transforms that you want to manipulate so new transform access array and this takes in an array not a list so if you're using a list you can just simply do a two list or a two a, a two array sorry so two array just convert that and the desired job count now this parameter is the the, the number of threads that you want this uh, job system to use so since in the profiler hang on just compile in just get like a timeline timeline going here I have five worker threads available so I'm gonna take up let's say just let's do three threads let's do three worker threads right just do three worker threads and this is basically going to split all the transforms into three different worker threads and that's kind of what it is you, it's pretty pretty useful a, ver a very useful feature of this so now that we have our transform access we can now schedule this job so we're going to do beneath this we're going to do job handle j handle equals move cubes dot schedule and we're going to pass in our transform access array that we have up here and now beneath this we're going to do j handle dot complete and now i have some extra logic for if the enemies reach the end of the path so i'm going to quickly implement that okay so i already created the logic down here and when we are done with all of our native containers and our transform access array we're going to have to manually dispose of our variables so loading exact indexes dot dispose you know do this for all of your variables like our native array native list any any sort of native container to prevent any sort of memory leak from occurring because these guys these native containers and transform access array they're not automatically uh, disposed from the memory you have to manually dispose it and now this is all complete so we should expect to see the job run on three job threads and it's going to move all these cubes the cubes that are spawning across this path so now let's go and run it all right and as you can see, you can see all the cubes moving around nice and smooth at a pretty high frame rate for the number of cubes here. I can't count how many cubes are. I just know that the spawn rate is 500. <laughs> so now if we, uh, let's say pause it right here and we go into our profiler and let's uh, choose a certain point, I guess over here. You can now see that our job system is running on our worker threads. You can see that it is splitting the workload amongst our threads here. We said it, we told the program that we want it to run on three worker threads, and you can see that happening here, right? Zero, one, and four are all running a, a specific amount of cubes here. So if you enjoyed this series, uh, you can go ahead, subscribe, leave a like, and comment what tutorial you wanna see. Uh, I, w I am open to any suggestions that you guys wanna learn. If there's a tutorial you can't find, then I could probably do it. I have um, some tutorials down the line that I'd like to share with you all in the future. But other than that, I'll see you in the next tutorial series or tutorial video.